The first reason we did it was just to get you in your TIs, running the commands again, drawing a box plot, getting a five number summary, running one parse, the, the, the usual mechanical stuff. Using the phrases, quartile, median, percentile, things like that. That's the big picture, if you will, the, the pen. That's the, that's the meets minimum standard of understanding. But what I wanted to do a little bit more past that was, let's show you how to write a sample. So no, nobody says what you shouldn't do is just use all 100 of those data points. Nobody says that. But in a general population, you won't be able to do that. You'll have to draw a sample from them, like you guys did. So what I see across all of these samples, which are gorgeous, is I see some sampling variability. But isn't there also a consistency amongst them, a somewhat of a consistency amongst them? For example, is the median ever up here? It would be too hard for the median to be up there because we would have had to select those high years all the time. But selecting the high years all the time doesn't sound very random. That's the whole thing, it doesn't sound very random. So as you notice, these boxes, they almost follow a pattern if you look at it. They almost go like, kind of go like this, which is deep for a while. That's, that's random in and of itself, just by the order of which you guys came up here. So if you notice, there's kind of like an area where the median lives. That one jumps out a little bit, yes? But these guys all kind of hung around the middle here. Very, very nice. Same as the mids. Again, sometimes you get the really low ones, but they're pretty much hovering right around here. Medians, quartiles doing the same thing. Every once in a while, you get a spike. Now, how many of you guys made the modified box plots on your data as well to find the outliers? Let me see if I can predict no. which one of you had outliers. Nope. 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 Yup. Nope. Nope. Yup. Nope. Yup. Yup. Nope. Nope. Did I get it right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, the reason I can do that so quickly is not because I'm mathematical, because I'm not. God, you know that. You know I can't add. <laughs> But there's a very, it comes up, and he asked me a question earlier. He said, how far away becomes unusually outlierishly far away? That's what we'll start talking about on Tuesday. Because there's a whole bunch of different ways you can define that depending on who you talk to. But there is one way, using the box plot that I just used, that essentially it does this. It takes the box, makes it 50% bigger, and then stacks the box on itself. If anything's outside of that range, it's called an outlier. So it's very easy to see which one of these have outliers. I can tell this one didn't, because if I make that 50% bigger and stack it, that guy's within that box, so it's not unusually far away. So when you have wide range but a tight middle like this one, you're gonna have outliers because they're way, way out there on the whisker. So some of you guys got outliers, some of you guys didn't get outliers. Don't worry about what an outlier is yet, that's how I was able to identify it really quickly. But here's the real reason I wanted to look at them. Right here, what I did here, this is the average of all of your guys' five number summaries. So this is your average minimum value. If I, across all those groups, if I averaged them, here's your average quartile one, your average median, your average quartile three, and your average max. That's using every single data point in the data set available. Isn't that amazing? It's almost exactly the same. And median essentially is the same. The median might be 27, and you said it was 28 or 30, but you're damn close. Even though the individual samples were wildly different from each other, when you combine the samples together, when you combine the samples together, you end up with this relationship right here. Pretty wild, huh? Pretty wild. That's the beauty of what's called replicating studies. That's why when you read in the newspaper, as I did two years ago, Multivitamins are now shown to fight cancer. <laughs> what? For 30 years I've heard that multivitamins do nothing to fight cancer. Here comes a study that says they do. Multivitamins fight cancer. And I read the study. I'm like, okay, I'm reading the study. I had plenty of problems with the study itself, but I've only seen one study that shows that it does, but a whole bunch that show it doesn't. So what was I reading with that study? I was reading an outlier result, which would be essentially the same as focusing on Holy crap! Go to Ben! The snow's all the time in Ben! The snow's all the time in Ben! Instead of going, well, that's about what usually happens. You see? You don't focus on the unusual, you focus on the entire thing. Now maybe the unusual is the entire thing, in which case you start making that drug or you start, so you start selling that procedure or whatever. But you can't just focus on the outliers because they're unusual. That's the idea. That's the idea. So that was, the, that was the secondary result of the little quiz you just did. The quiz was very simple, yes? Five number summary, write them down, ten points, done. You all get tens on it. You say woohoo. But the secondary was, what, why would you do 
this because when you have to sample from a population, it's better to replicate the results before reporting on them to make sure there's actually something there. Yes? Good. Makes sense. All right. That's it for me. Let's get you out of here. Go enjoy today. We'll see you next Tuesday. Talk about outliers. The chicken? Oh, look at you. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh. Are you sure? Yes, because I didn't get matching three. Was it matching ish? Like when you say no, look at your knives. Go take a look, take a look. Oh, sorry, Matt. Sorry. Let me turn this off. Yes. <laughs>